my office is on the seventh floor of Bunge Tower. So I had an I, I had a, a, a bad eye view of what was going on, and we had complained about the armed men who had been brought. They were they did not have any identifying mark other than the rifle, the sniper rifles they had, and they had a red, a red whatever. So, from my side, initially we had said that we go and meet the protesters and have them address us. Some of us volunteered, but the security people would not allow us to do that. We were stopped. And then uh, the breaching. First of all, I believe that if the Kenya police wanted to stop anybody from getting into parliament, there was no force that could, over, could overpower the police. The police allowed it. The police simply allowed the thing to happen. They pulled back. But the people who are in civilian, whom we think, are, we don't know who they answered to, who are the people who are pulling people down. And I think after the first few shots were fired, that's when there was that surge that came in. And when you go to parliament, there's damage in parliament to areas where I know the protesters never reached. So the question is, who's damaging these things? No, you're asking a very heavy question because the investigations so far have revealed that there was a gentleman who was on the precincts of parliament um, days before the protest, um, switching off CCTV. And as a senator, are you trying to say that the, the damage was engineered by someone else? The damage was engineered by someone else. And even if you look at it, you have not seen anybody with a model of, even the police lorry, why was it allowed to burn to, to ashes? There was a lot of, there were many vehicles with water that would, would put it out. How do, you, how do you burn a mahogany table to ashes within minutes? What accelerant are you using? The story in parliament has not been told. Why is it that the, the tables were shown broken and not the plates which were used for eating that food? You see? So you begin analyzing what happened there. It was after the, sniper, the snipers, had, snipers had killed people, they had to create a backdrop to justify the violence. That young man who said, Mr. Speaker, sir, he was inside the people's chamber. Did he threaten anybody? And so, when they ran into the tunnel, and some of us they tried to prevail on the National Assembly, first of all, there's been a conspiracy between the National Assembly and the executive not to bring the budget to, to the Senate, because the Senate are very few people. We have, a, we have a Senate of 67. The nominated senators, that's 16 women and uh, representing youth and disability, the four, do not have a vote. So the only people who vote are the elected senators. So we are only 67. We are able to have a meeting of minds on anything. And that's what the, what the executive has been trying to avoid. So where even the constitution is very clear, the budget is supposed to come to the Senate, but from Uhuru days, they have never done it. They have avoided the Senate. So we are largely bystanders uh, to what was happening. But uh, when, when these people began running into the tunnels and what have you, and when the, the place had been breached, you would realize that there was no violence from the protesters. You saw the physically uh, the disabled uh, member of parliament the bishop, he was not harassed. And even very many MPs were running into these young people, they were not harassed, nobody was harassed, no MP was hit. People were mocked, yes, but being hit, nobody was hit. That much I can say. So from where I was and from what I saw, there was no justification for that kind of uh, violence. But I still believe that uh, if, the, if anybody knows what, to, if anybody has got any sense, he should have seen that the police stepped back. And I don't know if you know that on that day there was no arrest during the demos. No, not a single person was arrested. That's why you need to see that this, this, this struggle here is, no, is, is a Gen Z led, but it has got very many sympathizers. And people are beginning to understand that this country can be better managed. And even when they wanted to do the adjournment, because the National Assembly reconvened quickly and under panic, they stamped, rubber stamped the decision to get the military out. 